Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Muhammad. In this video, which is the third video that we are discussing about IDL interface, I'm going to show you how to use IDL in normal applications. If you have watched the previous videos, we discussed about IDL interface as an introduction and then explain different scenarios that might happen when we are using IDL. In this video, as I mentioned, we are going to show you how to use IDL in normal applications. But just as a quick recap, in the last video in the series, I showed you how to define an IDL interface and how to make a library. This library that do we built in the previous video is going to be used in the client and several applications that I have developed and ready to show you. If you are interested, you can check out the GitHub repos that I have provided in my personal repo that you can find the link in the description. So the client, the several application and the AI DL library are part of the repositories and it's just ready to be built and used by you or maybe tested or having some workaround which would be helpful as a practice or maybe some kind of hands-on code to have or maybe better understanding about the topic anyway uh, in this video we have a client and a server application both of them are an Android application and the client application will try to bind to the server application and the rest of the communication and the sequences will happen but in this slide you can see that the client application has a fragment and has a footprint of the AI ideal interface on the other side you can see the server applications which has a service that implemented the AI ideal interface that we are looking for so these two applications are mandatory to have an ideal interface communication and the AI ideal library will be used in both applications for the communication and invoking the methods but I have provided a sequence diagram as well which as you can see the first step will happen on the client side which needs to bind to the service and returning a binder uh, by the server side and then when the client has a handle to the implemented the ideal interface it can involve the AI ideal methods that I will show you in the couple. Let's start with the AI ideal interface I wanna just review the I user interface which uh, you can see that's here it has three methods that uh, we need to implement in server application uh, as a class or maybe uh, some other workaround but uh, i just wanted to make sure that uh, we are in line and we are on the same page about the methods but we don't need it anymore i would like to jump into the server application as you can see here that's uh, a simple Android applications which has a, the AI ideal server which is a server class and also a user service class or maybe a user interface which is implementing a user interface so uh, that's not a, a, any special application uh, but uh, I would like to show you how the Android manifest look like because it's so important when you are going to implement that. So uh, this application um, only has a series and uh, an activity. The activity which is here uh, is a main activity uh, supporting two fragments which I remove one of them. So the first fragment um, has, re has been remaining here which uh, I will show you in the client side he here I didn't do anything special so we don't need to touch the application side uh, sorry the activity side or maybe the fragment in the server application if you have some uh, like functionality that you would like to have uh, that's uh, I mean another case but in this case which I have provided this example everything is gonna happen through service but uh, since we need to bind to the service this service should be enabled most it's better to be enabled but uh, that's not necessary but uh, being exported is crucial it's essential to have it exported otherwise the client which trying to bind to the application won't be able to catch to that and uh, the unbind uh, event won't happen and the bind will be blocked 
and I have um, defined an intent as well here that will be used on client application. So there is nothing special here, as you can see, just uh, defining a service which is here and uh, an intent filter. Okay, anyway, let's jump into the AI ideal server. Okay, that's here. Uh, that's a simple service. Uh, for some reasons, uh, I have overread, uh, overridden the other uh, methods. Just uh, for your information, you can check them. For example, when we are unbind, uh, this log can be captured in the uh, log cat, or maybe when the application destroyed as well. You can see that both of them gonna happen if there is any uh, bound uh, connection, and the others. Uh, but uh, mainly uh, we only need this one which is so important to return the user interface as a binder that's the crucial one or maybe the only essential part but the other part are, are kind of like um, optional that you can skip them as well but anyway uh, I, uh, we have mentioned or maybe we discussed that we need to implement the I user interface it happened here uh, I think I have forgotten to change the user service. It would be better to have the same name, but it doesn't matter. Here, uh, I have defined a new class. That's a user interface that I'm going to implement um, a user interface that stop. And that one, two, three, and uh, as you can see, four methods are crucial to implement they are mandatory and that's not kind of optional so the first one which is as a binder is kind of legacy from that stop that you need to use that but the other ones are something that uh, we define in uh, our AI interface here you can see that that's a, that's a thing so uh, just uh, to have some kind of feedback from the AI deal interface, I define some um, object that they um, they will be, they, they will be used as a return value or return object that we will catch them in the client side. And here as well, uh, I'm receiving something and we'll try to print that and that's a like event. So um, that's all the things. And in the AI deal, service i have tried to create the an object an instance of the user inter, uh, user interface with user interface which is here and ret returning that as a binder in unbind methods but let's jump into the client and see how it looks like that's here okay so uh, i i have tried to clean up the application to not having something extra but again let's start from the manifest as you can see here um, I don't have anything special here it's just an activity um, having a fragment but the only point which I would like to highlight here you need to uh, define a query and uh, mention which package you are looking for otherwise in some uh, SDK and API versions uh, you will face some issues that uh, the connection will be blocked okay anyway that's not something special let's jump into the code that's the first fragment and we don't have uh, that much special things to do I would like to show you that what what's happening here here um, I have created um, an instance uh, of a user interface which as you can see here it's null so it doesn't have anything here but uh, when uh, we receive a handle or maybe the binder from the service uh, we will set it to that but let's see where I'm going to do that here we have a button in the fragment and uh, when you are clicking on the button I will call the bind unbind to a ideal service which defined here yes and it has two conditions first of all if our user interface is null it means that we are interested to connect to the service and if it's not null I have supposed okay I would be interested to unbind from the service and set it to the null and be ready for the next connection or binding again so just toggling and I would like to show you the both cases uh, so 
when it's null we need to define an intent set the classes set the packages and uh, finally we will try to bind to the service but here you have a connection object and as you can see that's a service connection it's mandatory when you are receiving something or when you are binding if you would like to receive the feedback and others you need to implement that one and uh, there are two mandatory methods that you need to implement on service connected and on service disconnected i just uh, used this one here to, um, for my experience and i was doing some fun thing but um, it doesn't matter uh, better to focus on the um, main functionality or what is essential to have so when this on service connected invoked uh, it means that we have received a binder which is here service so through the service i will try to set that to the i user interface that i defined here so it means that most probably it would not be null and that's a kind of uh, okay that's a kotlin object since it's kind of a late in it uh, or maybe var which was nullable uh, it was necessary to do that and afterwards i try to get the user i have tried to invoke the get user and to make sure that everything is right i try to make sure that it's not null and after what i set it to the user and try to print it as a log and also set it to the here in the logs i'm logging um, I'm printing them to the log cat. You can catch them through the log cat, and here I'm appending them to the te to a text view in the fragment. And after what I'm calling or invoking another method, which is the update user. That's something cool that you can see here. We receive something with a specific name, and uh, then I change the name, set it, uh, and invoke that, and you can see that what's happening there. So uh, let's uh, start um, running um, the server first. Uh, I have usually some uh, um, uh, images here that I'm using. Anyway, let's uh, let's start the service and see how it goes. So you can see it's uh, running. The, that's a uh, that's a simple message. This application provides a bind service which has implemented an AI interface, which is not here, unfortunately. I think I've forgotten to uh, fix that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It won't affect anything at all. And I will try to make it bigger, bigger, bigger that you can see easier. And here you go. We can uh, run the application and I will try to jump to the service again because it's bigger here and you can see easily so as you can see here uh, that's the client now the client is running on top of the service and that's everything we have I will try to clear the log cat so we'll just catch whatever we are doing so anyway uh, I will try to bind to the service so that's a first fragment in the client application okay yes it worked and you can see that in the server side it's printing out uncreate unbind and update user mic which if we go there you can see that that's something this line blind to this line but how about the these lines it's happening here as you can see i have print uh, uh, printed them here and uh, that's all the things it's very very simple to use and that's all the things that you need so let's unbind and I try to unbind and uh, here on this row and unbind that something happened to the service so the service is ready again to be connected I will try to do that again sorry from the service side that we have here I will try to I think uh, Created. okay I need to change the message but anyway it worked um, here you see that it's uncreate unbind connected and the second time it's happening here but just for information 
I think I have forgotten to do just one thing which it's here when it's connected I have changed here but uh, I can uh, when I'm buying I need to set it back to the for example bind to the service let's run it again and see the changes I think it's it would be nice to build them at the same time and see how it looks like anyway um, that's how it looks like and that's empty and this is a server side it's empty as well I will try to bind it's bound and here you can see it's printed out then I will try to unbind okay it's changed now and uh, it means that it's not connected so just one time and the last message here is something which is connected and if I try to bind it try to create and the rest of them and here again it's connected and other so if we need to for example write something like it's uh, unbind or something uh, you can try to do them here or some uh, somewhere else that you are interested so anyway uh, we try to cover uh, whatever is essential to have an AI ideal interface in place as an um, IPC communication, as an IPC communication in Android. Now you can test on your own uh, by checking out the GitHub repo, building the AI ideal library first, and then building the service and the server and the client application. To see that how it works changing the code um, and uh, maybe doing some cool things uh, extending the classes or something else but just for information i have added something here that's the um, address of the ar file that in the uh, it's part of the sample AI, uh, sample AI ideal file which is here when it's building uh, all of them are part of one repo so when you're uh, first you need to build the um, sample AI ideal and then you can build the client and server application so uh, that's whatever uh, you need to know and uh, I hope that uh, you have found it um, something uh, helpful have a nice time see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.